The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, Monday, the 22nd of January. Gosh, the year's flying by. We're already into the third week of January. Towns of 214 and 38,075. So as we're looking at it right here, you see this, this rectangle, this narrow rectangle right here? That's been a body of... Um, the parameters, very narrow actually, parameters are really from, I would said from December the 15th that I don't see anything very negative. We should see the the uh, the dollar move up a little bit and uh, yields should go higher. But I don't see anything so drastic that I can in this particular chart right here, if I've got the right one, yep, <clears throat> my dog news uh, cloud index <clears throat> and uh, within that context I said I'm just making this dog to say that there's, there are things out there but the normality of selling off remember all of these rectangles with the light colored interior we saw the S&P futures just plummet went down 42 to 52 points the Dow went down at least 275 to 320 and then you got the sell-off that kept going we haven't seen anything close to that we had one sell-off the other day and then intraday turned around and closed higher so that just says to me that and that's one of the reasons why we covered our shorts last week as small short positions and I we are looking mostly at, at long positions, only at long positions right now. One of the reasons is that there's this high-level consolidation. That's what we're looking at right here. And I'm not sure that I can still keep this dark news cloud cover. I can't. I, I'd say there's a chance that this was an internal high and a residual high, but not when the, the nine-period moving average just refuses to go down and cross the black 14 period moving average to go pink. So the lines over the 14 looking quite good. So I have to just say, this is not in the cards right now. What is in the cards is that this rotation could have a little bit of a stalling formation as news, just every once in a while, a little negative news comes into one of the, uh, one of the sectors or stocks that are leading and what it does is it pulls back. Um, but as it's rotating, look at this. So you've got the Dow. You've got this rectangle formation right here. You've broken to the upside, all-time high. You've got the S. And, and look at this. This is the 13th week. It's not an F slash A anymore. This is absolutely an A right there. I don't know what it will take to pull back more than to the 36,500s, the 14 period moving average from this level. So this is still a leg A. This is look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine higher highs and higher lows. And then it goes into this wedge formation. 10, 11, 12. It gets repelled at that tiny little rising trend line. And boom, today it breaks out. That means for January, we've still got leg C. Let's just say all of February, there's no new all-time high. That means you've got yourself a peak C. That means you're going to go to D, leg D, in March. And then if that happens and you keep rotating up and down, up and down, April sees, your, sees a peak D. But wait a minute, look what you've got here. You've got the Dow in leg C. You've got the S&P monthly in leg D. Right, so we've already reached the buy mode obligation of getting to at least a D in the Chapman Wave methodology, the fourth highest peak. It's only a B in the weekly. So you've got an A in the Dow. You've got a B in the Dow futures. In the weekly chart, you've got a B, an A B in the weekly chart of the S&P. And look right here, this uptrend line that I've drawn in, I said, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if we're going to get there. 
4842.07 was the high on Friday. Now we're at 4868.41. So within this context, very short term, I can see some kind of an over, oversold, over, so overbought condition. Um, and that just says we can pull back into where we were maybe last week sometime. Let's go to the QQQ, slightly different chart formation. Very strong leg C. This was a leg B going to a peak B right here. Right there, 41, uh, 2.92. This is a new buy signal to buy mode. Stochastics at 89%. On balance volume, the blue line is a little overbought, but it's still strong. MACD just crossed positive a couple of days ago. Leg C to the upside in the daily. Leg G slash C, I believe it's a C. I'm not going to make a G slash C. I'm making it a C. And the reason why I, I always get questions from people who are not conversant with actually notating the Chapman wave, they've listened to me, but they aren't notating, is that the reason why I have an alternate count is, in this particular instance, because the, the 9 period moving average crossed so quickly to the upside, and the MACD and the stochastic all gave really nice signals, as if it could have been a brand new buy mode, but I had to wait for a breakout to an all-time high, about 408.71 408 in the QQQ, well, of course, 408, we're now at 423. Pretty decent move to the upside. Let's go back to our um, indexes. We're looking at the IWM. I, IWM got a brand new gray leg A. Gray because the stochastic's only at 21. On balance of volume is still kind of weak. MACD is very weak. Nine period is still weak under the 14. So this is, it's a work in progress, but it hasn't really broken out. So I'm giving it all of, I'm giving it six weeks. All of February, if there is a close at any point in the 208 area, it's at 196 right now, a close that is, in the 208 area, then I would say you've got a potential cup formation and the 244.46 high of November is in the cards. Right now, it's just a work in progress. But if you remember, I was looking at this uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said IWB, that's the Russell 1000. Uh, could it make a new high? And if it does that, would it be in leg D? Because let me just do this. Let me move this away. And I want to, this is a little, this is like I would do on a Friday. I'll do it now. This is, ooh, don't do that. What did you just do? There. Let me expand that a little bit. So what we've got was a peak B, just like the S&P. Uh, and that was the that was a high of was that January I believe also January no I think that was December so two sixty six eighty nine two sixty seven thirteen yeah January of twenty twenty two so that's just like this we keep your eye on this chart on the right that's the S and P month uh, there's the the I W M Russell I W why am I saying I Russell this is the I W B the Russell one thousand small caps so now let's look at the S&P, keep your eye on the right side chart. Let me just move this a little bit so you can see better. There you are. There we go. There was a peak being in the S&P. It looks the same, doesn't it? And look what we've done. We've gone to a leg D. Oh, I meant to do this in. I had it at some point and then I lost it and then forgot about it. Look at this. Here it is. Look, left side, right side, price, time match. It just missed it and then it went. It took a couple of months before it broke out. So these leg Ds in the S&P and the IWM surpass the B that was made way back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So while I'm looking at the S&P, the S&P 500 equal weight uh, ETF made a PC back in January 2022. Pulled back quite sharply. <coughs> Excuse me. And it has gone peak A, peak B, gray A, gray B, even a gray C because the stochastic only has 70%, and the MAGD, I have to wait for all of January to confirm that it's a, a blue, meaning it's going to go to a, a higher high. But this C means if you pull back, because already in January we haven't made a new uh, recovery high, let's just imagine it doesn't. And then in February, it goes slightly higher, but it doesn't go above the uh, 154.90 January 22 high. That supersedes that C. And that D says, oh, now you've got to be really careful, okay? But if it breaks above it, you have an overlapping C. In other words, if this continues high in January, it goes above last month's high of, this is the equal weight, remember, of 158.60, I think it is. If it goes one penny above in January, and it has all the rest of January to do that, then you're going to have a, a, a leg C if it's not, uh, a leg C. And then this C is still a C until it takes out that. If it takes out that high, it's no more a C. It becomes a D. And that's just a, it's a very functional thing. The Chapman Wave, there's, no, there's nothing really fancy about it. There are just moments where there's, an, there's a, an alternate count and your technicals are going to keep you in the position, especially something like the 914. Um, and uh, that's going to supersede anything else. And that's going to give you the information to say, hey, I'm, I'm wary. I, I understand that there could be a, a different notation. And therefore, got to be just a little careful. You don't have to actually do anything. You just got to be prepared. OK, so we've got that. And let me do a couple of questions here. So PLTR, Palantir, we've looked at very often, having a nice session today. If I can actually get it to come up. There it is. Um, nice session today. Up 1.33, up almost 8%. At 18.11. I looked at it the other day and I said, yeah, it's just kind of stuck here until it can start to trade above the, the high of the 27th, which was at 17 point, which is at 17.91. If it can trade above there, it can't go once, it's just going to trade above there. This is the first time it's doing it. All of a sudden, it's got a, it's just a different animal altogether. Palantir Technologies Inc. develops data fusion platforms, whatever the heck that is. Oh, data fusion, that's easy. Um, 
Yeah, and then then you start to look at this target of the 15th of December of 19.15. So far, it's had a nice gap up. It's holding, I don't know if this is earnings or whatever it is, but whatever it is, um, it's holding. And if by the end of the day, it hasn't given back uh, and, cl and closed under 17.83, but closes somewhere here or higher, that's good. It means finally it's back in business and it can tackle one step at a time. It'll be that, that peak just above 90. Uh, oh, and I should say, if it closes between today and tomorrow, under about a third, let's call it 17.70. If it goes under that and then closes, it says, oh, it's not, it's not holding whatever gave it this, this little rocket ship move. Uh, it's not holding it. That's not good. I'm going to get a question that I'll go to, and that was SQ, which is, it was square, now it's called block SQ. Nice bounce off the low. Now, this is interesting. I looked at some of these over the weekend. We, we do have some nice positions. We've got, we had a small position, two small positions in something that was just horrendous forever, just for a year or two. And we got stopped, just got stopped out, and then it bounced. But I really liked it. So we got back in, and today it's made up, making up for the, for the, that loss um, because it's acting very well. And this is a stock in the $3 area. So I've got a really big mix. Of course, we've still got our Microsoft. I, I, I almost said today, if it hits 400, let's take another tad. We've taken so many little tads off. We've also had nice trading positions. Uh, we've got a really good core. I don't want to mess with this. Uh, this is, you know, I think there's a story out, something about um, hacking. Yeah, well, they'll deal with it, whatever it is. Um, and that is that was my proxy for the Dow Diamonds at the same price back in late October. It's been a spectacular move. Um, and now, sure, you can have a little digestion. Uh, it needs it. And whatever it takes, that's fine. And then there's another one that I got into also, something that, acted very poorly, and then it started to rally very nicely. Now, we got in on Friday. If you if you bought it as a subscriber, if you bought it immediately after I sent it out, then it just hit the stop and you were taken out. I said, you've got to get back in under a certain level today, and now we're back in. But I, there are people I know that are actually are holding it. They got in. They were fortunate enough to get in just like 10 minutes or so later, so their stop held. Um, it's just tough when I do this and I have stops. It's just I've never understood what. If I really like it, technically I should just say buy it and no stop. Let's see what happens. I can't do that, especially with individual stocks. Things happen. What, I'm going to sit here with a stock, uh, say whatever it is, uh, at buy it at 30, say 38. And for who knows what reason, um, it suddenly drops 12 points. These things happen. What do I do then? I'm sitting with a stock that's now down 30-something uh, percent, and I've got to get the subscribers. Maybe this is a subscriber, new subscriber. First time they ever buy anything from a newsletter. Boom, that's the one they choose. I, 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 I don't like to live with that. So it means that sometimes you get stopped out, you have to get back in. That's just the way it is. So now, um, so within this context, we once had Square. We once had Square at about, um, I think it was... A long time ago, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but I'm not going to go back to find it. But we had it way down near the lows, um, and then we either we take a, took a little a small little profit, or we got a small little loss, and then I never got back in. And then it went from 38.85 in October of 2023 to 80.28 December. Now I had this. Oh, I had it, and then I had to redo it. So I lost. Oh, that's why I haven't got the notation. Here. So if I go to this particular midpoint right here from this high that was made back in July, around about 80 something, and I go to this particular high right here, which is one of the techniques that I use for looking at price time match. In other words, the number of bars from the high to the low should equal the number of bars from the low to the high. But sometimes if you do it and you do it a little late, as it started to come off the high. This obviously looked right here with a side in doji before the actual low of the, on the 4th of October. The low was the 5th at uh, 42.64. <clears throat> um, 
if I take that as the low, it doesn't really work. But if I go to the little doji candle high of, and that's what I usually use, either the arch or the cup low on the other side. So I go right here. Let's see if that's going to work because that's normally what I would do. And I thought I had done it some time ago. And that's why I was very upset that I didn't get back in to square or block. And now I'm going to do this. Look, watch this technique. I will have to, you don't have to have rectangles. You could just have a straight line, make it one color or thick, and the next one's thin. I'm pushing up the PlayStation. Now I'm going to go to the right. And let's see where that comes. And then what I would do is I'd go from the left side low, right here, particular candle, and I go to the join to join this. Now let's see if it works out. So that could be there. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 236. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, before I go on, thank you to Peaky in the Den. Yes, the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Melbourne Games tennis has been fantastic. Actually, I love, this is one of the, the most fun that I've watched in tennis in years and years and years. It's one thing having guys that come on, or women that come on and the ace and the ace and the ace. But I love to see cross-court, running, dropping, uh, just all those things that he can smack between the legs, you know, that's, all that stuff. I love it because that's just fun. That's, that's, that's like 
the difference between, say, options and regular stocks. This is really moving. This is, you really have to, you know, the, the techniques are fantastic. I love it. And uh, it's also great to see Americans uh, up there in the, the top uh, top rung. That's good. Okay. So this is a yes, square. So the, I did this and I showed you that was the plumb line that I used right there. And uh, it would have taken me to around about the 18th of December at uh, 80, whatever it was, just, just over 80. And it got to uh, just under 80. And five days later, it went to with a doji candle, 80.28 PG. So PG was talking to me about uh, the tennis. So this is a PG. And then it's pulled back to the 200 period moving average, a nice bounce. So this is saying, this, this goes to exactly what I was talking about, that there's a chance that we're looking at a rotational correction because, you know, this, this the big moves to the upside mostly have been the Magnificent Seven and, you know, obviously other stocks as well, but not the general consensus. You've not had a really broad, you've had a broadening of the indices slowly, but not really leadership broadening. So that just says to me, yeah, this is very select. And I, I'm anticipating we do have some kind of a, first of all, so Square, let me finish that. So Square, this is a really, look at the nine period moving average um, in the weekly chart, in the daily chart, that's weak. But in the weekly chart, it's strong, and that's the one you've got to stick with. So I like it. Looking out, if you're looking at Square as a play, I would say this should not be your big position. But if you're looking at it and you have time on your, oh yeah, just you, you, you have patience. Start if you're not in it. Start a position right here. This is a person who asked me because they they look at the longer picture. They are prepared to add at certain points but to start a position and small. And I would just say, this is not the perfect position. The daily chart hasn't swung around enough for me to say, ha, huh, buy signal, haven't, hasn't even got the buy signal, let alone a buy mode. But just as a little starter position, I'd have a small at 68.05. And I would actually have a stop on this one all the way down. So it's almost like a 10%, but it's a very small position. So it's not like it's a tragedy. Something happens because you want this as a starter to give you the the all the information to say, where can I add? So just a real tiny start. If you want to wait, you could wait. Today's low is 67.13. It's trading at 68.08. You could get close to the 67s if you feel that that's what you want to do. But yeah, just the starter position. And it's got a lot of work. The weekly chart, monthly chart, you can see a lot of work before it can really build. If it didn't pull back this much, and as it went to the last move to 80.28, and in fact, it stalled right at the green nine period moving average and had the same proportion of move now, I say, oh, this is really good. It's not. It's just, it's, it's building some kind of a base. Okay, enough of that. So next question came in. I wrote it down. PCT. Uh, plastics, huh? PCT is PCT. Plastics, young man. Okay, so we've got a three dollars and thirty-one cents up fourteen cents. This is a leg B. Well, the daily chart is trying to lead the weekly chart. There is a lot to go. So the question should be: Yes, same sort of thing. I'm doing the short-term trade, but I'm looking at the longer-term picture. I think that's really the question here, Dan. If that's the question, the monthly chart is just horrible. The weekly chart has moved from horrible to less horrible. The daily chart has just begun because it took out this rectangle arch low and closed under it twice, and then it moved up. I'm just going to say to you, as a starter position, I don't know if you've got a position in this. Let me just check I don't know if I can find it uh, real quickly. Uh, I don't think I'm going to find it. I, 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 I. No, I can't find it. So I'm just going to deal with it as it is right there. And I'm just going to say, would I buy? Would I sell? Would I hold? Uh, what would I do right now? And I'm going to say, um, I would actually start in your case because it is one of those that you've done some homework and it's called um, Power Cycle Tech Inc. Power Cycle or Cyclo Cycle. Uh, PCT trading at three dollars and twenty nine cents up twelve cents. Yes, it's it's intriguing. I wouldn't get too carried away, but if you're looking for a trade, this is one where if you're going to trade, I would have a stop, and I have a stop. It's a three thirty one. It's a big percentage stop, so I, that would 
not be ideal for me. I wouldn't do that. But I'm just looking at it and saying, you've got to give it a little room because it's coming off uh, uh, lower lows and lower highs. And now it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows. So I don't want to see it go under 309. It's at 331, 309, just a short-term stop right now for the day. But if it can't, I don't think it's going to. But if it can break the high, today's high of 342, I would raise that stop and I'd raise it almost to 315. I'd, I'd make it a big jump. Okay? So it's just a starter position. There's a lot of work to be done. Next question came in. Oh, I forgot to look at uh, Tiger YouTube. Um, slightly after. Yeah, so just a mention by Jeff about IBM. So IBM has news coming out, uh, earnings news is coming. Uh, where did I type that? Oh, I typed it right there on the chart instead of over there. I, IBM is the one that I've been talking about for over a year now, saying this is the one that's been, it's a reincarnation. Really, it's the only way you can look at it. They're really in the sweet spot right now. They're up, gapped up at 173.29, up $1.81. I almost, well, I was going to do this. I was going to say, look, for a trade going into Wednesday, because I think Thursday, did I write it down? Thursday. Oh, oh no, no, no. It's Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday is the earnings. I was going to say for a trade, let's get IBM and then take as much off as we can and just keep a little bit for the earnings. Now it's all done. It's it's not that's not a viable opportunity for me. Um, this is looking really good and it's gonna be a leader in twenty twenty four. So if let's just say it, it moves up now. But the earnings come out and it sell the news rather than fantastic. It either gaps up overnight, but the next day it gaps down. I would look at it as uh, I know the questions come in. Where would you where would you buy IBM if you've missed it up until now? It's really tough. But that gap in the 167 uh, area to 165, I, that's where I'd be looking at it. I'd have to do an assessment, but that's kind of where I look at it. hope that helps you. Next question, if I can just type this in here. Uh, maybe I'm listening to. Oh, an amateur took the PGA. Isn't that interesting? Uh, oh, you saw a, a small position on Friday in Square. Very good. Congratulations. So, uh, option. Okay, so good thing options on PCP. That's the best way to do it. Uh, Basil Energy. The Uraniums. Are they due for a pullback? I, I would say they do for a pullback. But I'll be back in a moment. We'll look at it. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. And what was I looking at? I was looking, oh, a question came in about uh, uranium. So are you are in, you remember I said that everything about this particular chart, and I've counted it umpteen different ways, I, I can't get any other count, but this could be a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. Therefore, this could be possibly, I, I just each way I get a C, but the character of this candle right here at, at 58 in the uranium uh, sprot, Uranium miners ETF at 58.15. Everything about it looks like a D. And to coincide with that, if you look at a CCJ, this is an F, an alternate count F, and it looks like it really is an F and a D in the weekly chart. If you look at UUUU, -U -U, uh, CCJ is Chemico uh, Uranium, UUUU uh, -U 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 is Energy Fuels Inc. Uranium. This is, I, I said, out of the Two stocks that were mentioned a long time ago, that I had a choice of a choice of the two for the uranium. I, I this is the weakest one. The one that I, I chose was the UEC uranium, mm. uranium energy core, and that had an alternate count, and it really looks like it's an F and not a C. I don't know yet, but everything about it, the way it gapped up, the way it's pulled back, taken four bars. To fill the gap and then go lower instead of at this point the third bar to the fourth bar should have been the one that retested the high this just looks to me like it's having a breather but this is the most important thing look at the monthly chart all-time high uh, it went to 829 the all-time high was back in 935 back in 2000 February of 2007 the previous high which it took out at 748, because the high here was, what did I say? Did I say the wrong thing? Uh, 8, 829. So 829 is a recent high. It took out the high of November of 2010 of 748. And if you look at URNM, um, there, I, I don't have enough information going back. I wish I had the symbol for uranium. I got it for platinum, but I don't have it for uranium. So, um, and here I'm, I am so far calling it a C in the monthly chart and not an E. Uh, why? Because that's the starting point right there. And we never took it out. So this means you can continue the wave count just sequentially in the alphabet. All right. So, um, so the question was uh, NXE, I think it was, right? I think it was NXE. NXE is, in fact, next. Next Gen Energy Limited. See, this is this is actually like UEC. This is a these are the two best charts that you can see. Look, we went to, and I believe that this is an all-time high. So let's get rid of that right there. So next gen, let's go to the daily and the weekly chart. Um, yeah, so C, D, E, and this could be an F. I'm calling it an F for now. If I'm wrong, that's fine. But that's a D, that's an E, and that's an F. 
All right, it could be an F slash B, but at the moment I'm calling it E. And this is, oh, ho, 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 this is um, E, F, G slash C in the, month, in the weekly chart, G slash C. All very strong, but very short term, I think we'll fill that gap. So the answer is, if you're looking to buy NXE, or maybe you have it because I know you have a bunch of the uraniums, um, be prepared this at 732 right now, 745 down to 15 cents, 732 is the 14 period moving average. I think you can fill it and it can even go to 728. In the 720s, is that's where we're going to have to look. Is that going to be a brand new buy signal? But we haven't got that yet. We haven't even got a sell signal, let alone a sell mode. So I'm just saying high level consolidation. I my my eye says that uranium is in play. And it's in play for a while. I think it's still going to be in play for 2024, even if there's a bit of a pullback here. That's just the way I'm looking at it. Next question came in, and I can't see where it is. Okay, there it is. Um, so here's a question that I think should be, uh, should be, I wouldn't say on the forefront of everyone's mind, but it should be something that you're thinking about. The reason why VIX, the reason why I was a little hesitant last week about a lot of, a lot of the, the price action is because the volatility index, you remember early last week, <clears throat> the VIX screamed to the, let me give you the exact price, to the 1580, 15, 15.40 level. Yes, it went to a peak D, but in the chap wave uh, methodology, there are just one or two um, instruments that I don't use chap wave for. I always notate it, but it's really, you don't expect necessarily a, a C and a D in a buy mode in the VIX because it can, it almost always fails underneath that. So there's a C minus back in March of 2023 at 30.81. The low is 12.68 back in, I think it was September. And then it pops up to the 20. 223 area, and then it comes all the way back, and that's a B. That's actually a B minus because it failed. So that's the one place that you don't get chapter wave notation. Okay, so my thing was that I said, I'm suspicious of the volatility index coming off just about all time highs. It was, in fact, all time high for the Dow. I, that says too, too much too soon, and that's exactly what we've seen. But we're looking at the volatility index making higher highs and higher lows. Yeah, that is important. And I'm suggesting to you that this is, I, I could be totally wrong in this, but I'm considering that the move that we're looking at from Friday to today is just an extension. It isn't, a, I don't see it as a brand new buy signal. That, that really is the start of weeks and weeks of upside move. I see it as, the culmination of the buy mode that we were in, even though it's recycled a couple of times, and that I, I don't feel 100% sure, but I'm almost in the 80% area that says we're going to have a consolidation here before we can restart anything to the upside that is sustainable. I could be wrong. That's all I'm saying. And that's what the chart seemed to be suggesting to me. All right. IYT is a question that came up. What a, well, what's, what's going on? The IYT has not made an all-time high, yet the Dow has. Well, that's the old Dow theory. There have been so many modifications and changes to all the different indices. To I mean, the same way as gold is not participating as it usually does. And I think that's because Bitcoin is taking away from the, 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 the adventure of, uh, of being in one of these volatile areas. Look, and I gave you a sell signal, which I think is now a sell mode. Yep, it's a sell mode. And the BTC, the Bitcoin Futures Continuous Contract Daily, it's almost, I have to wait for the week to finish, but it's, it looks like I could very get, maybe even get a sell signal. There's a sell mode in the daily. The sell signal is not yet. I have to wait for Friday's close in the weekly. Monthly chart looks very good. And you remember ETHE, I said, mm, I think that this is a short-term top at that peak D. And yep, there it is. Look, the same with chart as the uranium. So this is a D, and it's pulled back. This is in a sell signal, uh, Ethereum, uh, in the daily chart. I By the end of the day, I might have even upgraded to a sell mode. All right? So now let's go back to where we were. We're looking at the IYT. And the IYT is saying, hey, I'm participating. I'm just not leading. 
But if the, the transportation index any time into the first week of February is able at what, 261, can actually go to 268 or 269, that would be really good action. Dow's up 182, S&P's up 12, we'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Just a quick run through XPeng uh, and uh, Spang, I think I don't know what it's called. Designs, develops, manufactures, XPV, the smart EVs. Um, down 31 cents today at 9.33. It's getting really close to a bit of a bounce. It better bounce in the next two days because this is ugly. Just 
absolutely ugly. It's down almost a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside in the weekly chart. Um, 880s should really be key support. Looking at Apple, Apple's having a nice session of 2.31 and 193.87. Leg C, buy mode uh, in place, helping the weekly chart make an, a, a cup to a W formation. And the monthly chart's still good. Um, Amazon, Amazon is trading at, uh, ooh, sudden turnaround. Just missed uh, another high, not an all-time high. That was at 188. So it's at 154.51. So you can see that we've got, look, Microsoft, nice, a nice, nice turnaround. Needs a bit of a breather here in leg F. This is a instant restart. I'm still pointing this in F. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and meantime, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rose. The day is young. I, I can't believe I just the face off. Picked you up on Friday. Was helped by Options Expression. Have a great day. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and I will see you.